The fire service were driving to the fire station garage, but was greeted with an unexpected surprise. Hold on a minute, why is Venus here? I remember taking the bus to get here. That's right, my header drove us to the station if I remember correctly. Maybe it's another firefighter from uh, Newtown. Or maybe... <sighs> Chief Fire Officer Stanley Boyce! Chief Fire Officer Boyce was in charge of a Pontypandy Fire Service Station, slightly higher than Station Officer Steel. He was quite taller and quite slimmer than Steel, which made him secretly jealous. Steel and Boyce trained together and worked in the Clerkenwell Fire Station in London quite a while ago. The four firefighters were surprised to see boys while Steele sighed in an annoyance. They soon got out of Jupiter and went to fire Officer Boyce in the yard. Good afternoon everyone! Hello Chief! What brings you here if you don't mind me asking? Well then, I thought considering the weather getting more ghastly, uh, I thought it would be beneficial if I were to help out throughout the week. Oh, well, that's Andy. Well, I suppose it would give some excitement to good old Steel here. Wouldn't it, Bessel? Ha ha ha! I knew you were say that. Our Sam has actually saved poor Mrs. Asanya from falling to a dramatic demise. <laughs> is that so? Well then, looks like an award ceremony shall be handed to Fireman Jones tomorrow afternoon. A nice shiny medal awaits you. Oh, really, Chief? I was just following unofficial orders. More than that, Samuel. Bessel could learn a thing or two from him. Elvis, Penny and Trevor chuckled lightly, while Steele muttered under his breath. Meanwhile, Norman, who followed them, was watching behind a bush outside the yard and was more than impressed. Oh! Jumping jelly babies! I didn't know Fireman Sam was more of a hero! Perhaps I can act kind and earn a medal. He ran quickly to the fire station while they still walked into the station. Here, let me help you through the door, Fireman Sam. Hello, Norman. What you up to today? Me? Oh, nothing. Just being kind to see if I could earn a medal. Sam sighed and muttered Flippin' heck under his breath and told Norman some words. Look Norman, earning a medal takes more than just simple kind acts. It's important, but it takes acts of bravery to earn one. Not stupid cheesy nonsense like flying with a cape and saving some lass from from a villain with an eye patch. Acts like saving someone from danger, standing up to a despicable person for a scared soul, or even just being there for someone where they needed the most. Sam was surprised what he said and accidentally slammed the door out of embarrassment. Now, this made naughty Norman into naive Norman. Well! Heroic adventures, here I come! Now I just need to know all what I could do! Norman walked away, hatching a idea to be the next hero next door. Sam, while in the station, faced palms smoothly. You alright, Sam, mate? You seem like you ran a marathon. Oh, hello, Trev. I'm quite alright, really. Just a tiny bit knackered from saving Bella. Alright. Still, Officer Boyce is going to tell us tales of when he and Still were young firemen. Care to join us? I'll politely pass on that. Might have a rest upstairs. Ah, oh, 
Fair enough. Still, if you need someone to talk to, I'm here. Thanks, Trevor boy. See you in a bit. See you later, boyo. Sam went upstairs to find a chair in a loft to sit on. He sat down and sighed. It wasn't easy for him saving Bella. While pleased for the thank you he received, a kiss that Sam got gave him memories that made him carry a heavy feeling. He didn't know how to solve his feeling, he had it for a while, but he decided to have a scroll through a newspaper before his shift finishes. Just then, Sarah and James popped up from the floor. Hello Uncle Sam, I heard you saved Bella. We're so proud of you. Oh, uh, thanks. You're right, Uncle Sam. You seem tired. Oh, it's quite all right, you too. Just grown up stuff. What time is it? Well, Elvis let us through as it's 12.58 when we came up here. We could wait a minute before it's one o'clock. All right, then. Soon, a minute passed and a clock in the loft struck one. And Sam, Sarah and James slid down the pole and walked out of the station. The twins thought it was great fun sliding down the pole, while Elvis pretended to bream the floor as to block their view from fire officer boots. Quite a cleaner you are, young fireman Crittington! Oh, uh, yes. Can't get enough of the stuff. Well, that reminds me. Uh, here we go. When me and Basil were youngsters, I would often room with miraculous measure. No fire dust would affect our lungs when Fireman Boyce was around. And for Basil, oh, he was good too. They all chuckled while Station Officer Steele gave him a disgruntled look. They all stopped laughing then. Well, as much as I would love to chit-chat, I've got some important files to look at. Cheer for now. Uh, okay, sir. Good luck, Basil. By the way, Chief, could I ask you a couple of questions? Of course, young Crittington. What is it? Well, you see, Chief, I nearly caused a major accident today. If it weren't for Sam, I may have possibly risked Bella's life, as I didn't uh, catch her in time. Well, you see, young Elvis, a key factor is timing. Timing is an important path to successful fights. Voice told Elvis tips and tops about being a firefighter. Meanwhile, Steele sat in his office looking at an old newspaper article dating all the way back to 1950. Young fireman Battle Steele saves life. Gentlemen declared to be the hero. Steele laughed lightly and decided to continue with a crossword puzzle. 